what's going on everybody it's Eric Ray with the back here and in today's video we're going to be discussing Madden 18 and five things that just flat out did not work correctly this year things that were somewhat new to the game uh, things that EA tried to implement and uh, that just did not work out right were kind of a failure and you know maybe how we can improve it going forward or you know take a look at what went wrong with these things that could have actually been really good for the game but wound up kind of falling flat so if you guys are new to the channel first time checking out a video uh, if you want to stay up to date on Madden news and you want to have Madden tips to improve your Madden game consider hitting the subscribe button below if you do subscribe make sure you hit the bell icon so that you're on the notification squad and never miss an upload so let's get right into it five things that simply just did not work this year that just fell flat and I think number one on the list has to be target passing uh, target passing was a new mechanic that was put into the game this year it was one of the big you know selling points it was you know a box feature it was something that people were looking forward to it was it was displayed heavily in the first you know gameplay clips and gameplay trailers uh, you know now you could throw the ball where you could never throw it before you could lead receivers into open areas like never before you could thread the needle in a tight coverage you could throw back shoulder fades and it just completely fell flat even the best of the best didn't use this mechanic because of how unreliable it was I mean it was just so hard to master and even if you could master it in let's say like practice mode you know pulling it off in game you know real game scenarios while under pressure you know while you know going up against good defenders who could jump routes uh, if they met certain zone thresholds it was just a nightmare this even the best of the best on the biggest stages the tournament players the elite Madden players did not use this mechanic because it just was not reliable it was just way too hard to execute if it's if it's too hard for the best of the best to execute it consistently then the average or casual gamer had no chance to ever get any use out of this and I believe even Rex or if not Rex one of the devs even came out and said at some point you know halfway through the year that just it just was a failure it just did not work out the way they envisioned it uh, it fell flat and then towards the end of the year it actually produced the Hail Mary glitch which if most of you uh, you know don't know what the Hail Mary glitch was it was where you could essentially highlight the player you wanted to target pass to but then purposely overthrow him to a receiver that was way down the field but the computer the defenders the AI thought that you were trying to pass it to the other guy so they would still bite on the other wide receiver leaving the guy on a streak or a Hail Mary uh, throw wide open for a touchdown now EA did patch this up pretty quickly once it became a thing but it's just you know it target passing didn't work to begin with and then it even turned into something that was really glitchy at, at a certain point of the year so probably the you know the biggest grandest fail uh, of the year for EA but uh, with all that said let's move on to number two and that would be the coaching adjustments again something else that was just so hyped up coming into this year was something we had in NCAA in the past it was you know anybody that played in CAA it was this was always one of their favorite features you know you could set your pass rush to aggressive or you know you could set it to conservative if you know depending on what what the game script called for uh, you could tell your defenders to play aggressive against the ball in the air or you can tell you know your run blockers to you know block more aggressively you could tell your running back to play more conservative and make sure you cover the ball all really good things and something that definitely should have been in Madden and we were so happy again it was one of the biggest selling points coming into the game they featured it in the uh, trailers it's on the back of the box it's just one of those things that were like yes we finally have more control more you know we can tweak more things that's what we want as football fans but again these were just all year long an utter failure um you know there was they were constantly getting patched there were times where you know the, the coaching adjustments were too overpowered and then there was times where they did absolutely nothing and, the, and it just kept changing with each patch or title update that EA put out uh, you know there was a point of the year where you could put your pass rush on aggressive and they would never jump off sides uh, and then there was points where they patched that and then even if you had your pass rush on balance you could get people to jump off sides almost every other place so then it got to the point where you had to put it on conservative but once you put it on conservative you really could get no pass rush and then 
just like that, a couple weeks later, people found out that, oh, if you use certain defensive formations, you can leave your pass rush on aggressive all game, and they'll almost never jump off sides. And then, and then with the with the ball carrier, there was a point of the year where you could put your uh, your running back on conservative, but you could still juke everybody and make the first defender miss. So you would pretty much never fumble, but the jukes and the spins were so overpowered that you can make the first defender miss every time too. So you got the best of both worlds. And then it got to the point where they're like, okay, we have to patch that. So if you're on conservative, you can't make people miss anymore, but you probably won't fumble. But then that caused a problem later down the road where that once you started putting your uh, ball carrier on even conservative, he would fumble a lot. And it just, no matter what you did, they just, they were not consistent at all this year. They did not work. Um, and it's almost one of those things where I don't want to say take it out of the game completely. I would hope that there's a way that they could actually fix it and make it work. But it just seems like one of those things that there's always going to be a problem with it. There, No matter, you know, whatever title update it is, they're going to tweak something. And then it's going to go from being over effective to being useless. And then people are going to find another way to make it over effective. And then they got to patch it again and make it useless. And it's just, it's a constant up and down. And, you know, it's, it's a great feature that I think we all want in the game, but clearly it was an utter failure uh, this year. Um, and while we were kind of, let's piggyback off that and go to number three, which was ball carrier moves. So let's rewind a couple years. The double juke was like really overpowered in Madden. It definitely took a little bit of stick to pull off, but it was overpowered. So then in Madden 17, pretty much ball carrier moves were useless. The only thing you could do is truck. Get a trucking back and truck. Um, couldn't spin, couldn't juke, they were useless. This year, they're like, okay, we need to bring it back. We need to make it able to juke and spin. We need to, you know, revamp the ball carry moves. And at the beginning of the year, it was like, all right, cool. We can finally have stick again and, you know, make people miss. But again, it fell flat on its face. Juking and spinning was just far too easy. Literally, anybody could pull it off. You can make the first defender miss every time, whether it was a computer defender or a user defender. Didn't matter if you were in perfect position. If someone pulled off a juke or a spin, they were pretty much going to make you break your ankles every time, make the first defender miss. To the point where, in Ultimate Team, they started putting the chemistry secure tackler on certain really good cards to where they wouldn't get faked out. Or, excuse me, the unfakeable chemistry where you couldn't fake this player out. So instead of just fixing the ball carry moves and saying, hey, we're not going to make it to where you can juke the first defender every time, they were like, well, an ultimate team, if you spend some more money, we'll give you an unfakeable chemistry. But the crazy thing is, is even some of the unfakeable cards at times would still get faked out. Not as much as the other cards, but they still would. So it was just one of those things where it, the ball carry moves were useless last year, but then this year they were just too OP to where that's all people wanted to do was run the ball and just juke and spin. Literally the most basic average player that wasn't even that good at the game could run the ball all game because of how overpowered these moves were and then later in the year trucking becomes overpowered again to where you can literally truck the air you could truck nobody and it would fake the defense out and that's still a problem that's happening in the game now so ball carry moves as a whole just did not work this year they tried to patch them at a certain point but they were still very over effective like i said you can truck the air and make your defense the, 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 you can make the defenders dumb out and you can still spin and you can still juke them pretty much the first time and it just makes it for a bad game it doesn't matter how good you are on defense you can run commit you can play the right defense you can be in position and still get faked out takes the skill gap out of the game so ball carrier moves they brought them back uh, revamped them, but they fell flat on their face because they were just way too overpowered to where anybody can do it, and that's all you saw. Uh, so going into number four, uh, catch animations were really bad this year. You know, a few years back, they put all the new catches in the game, the possession catch, the aggressive catch, the rat catch. Very great addition. One of the best things they've put in the game in a while, in my opinion. But this year, uh, you know, the catch animations just... You would press you know, a rat catch, and you would have, you know, the defender beat for three or four yards. All you have to do is just run under the ball and run into the end zone, and they would go aggressive catch the ball randomly. Now, they wouldn't do it every time, but there were far too many times this year that on a rat catch, somebody would go up for a, for an aggressive catch, and when you did that, it gave the defender, you know, just a couple extra seconds to actually catch up to you and hit you in the air, and then you would drop the ball when you should have just been walking in for a touchdown. Um, there were also plenty of times this year for the first time ever that you would try to go for a possession catch a lot of times and then you would go for a rack catch. And this usually would happen on short passes where you kind of had to try to trigger your your possession catch quickly because maybe you were just throwing like a really short five-yard pass. But 
you know, in years past, the last couple years, you could still trigger that possession catch and catch it and go down. But this year, a lot of times, when you try to trigger that possession catch, they would actually do a rat catch and then run right into the defender and drop the ball. So just all in all this year, catch animations were bad. You, you know, you would tell your receiver to do one thing and he would do the other thing. And that's just not good because that's literally taking the game out of your hands. That's saying, well, I know this is the type of catch you want to make, but for whatever reason, we're going to trigger this other catch for you. And then because of that, you lose out on a touchdown or maybe it was a fourth down and you should have had a clean catch, but you dropped the ball because your guy went for the wrong animation that you didn't tell him to go for. So definitely something they need to fix uh, going into next year. And last but not least, number five, thresholds. Thresholds, thresholds, thresholds. So coming into the year, again, something else we were excited about. We heard, okay, you know, if my guy has a certain catch rating, he won't drop the ball if he's wide open. If a certain defender has a catch rating, he won't drop wide open interceptions. Uh, if a quarterback has a certain accuracy rating, he won't overthrow the ball if he has a clean pocket. All things we like because we like control over the game. We say, hey, if I throw to an open receiver and he has a good catch rating, I shouldn't drop the ball. Yes, he might drop it in real life, but I shouldn't drop the ball because as far as a game goes, I did all I could do to be successful on that play and you kind of took it out of my hands. Uh, but the biggest thing with thresholds is the zone threshold. We all know the 91 zone threshold. 91 zone will jump all the routes. 90 zone won't jump any route. And 99 zone is going to jump routes equally as good as 91 zone. Now they say 99 is better than 91, but it's not a visible difference that you can see. If you have a guy with 91 zone, you pretty much have the best defender you can have. Whereas if you have a guy with 90 zone, which is one less point, he can't do anything, and it just really ruined the ultimate team, and it ruined regs. Because if you couldn't get that zone threshold, it was like the player was useless. He couldn't defend anything. But if you had 91 zone everywhere, it was then it became extremely hard to pass in general. Um, but then even other thresholds were broken. You know, defenders would have the catch rating that you needed to not drop picks, but they would still drop picks a lot of times. And, uh, you know, it's been a problem forever in Mad. You know, there would be, you know, still quarterbacks that had the threshold for accuracy and would still overthrow passes. So it's like... If you're going to put thresholds in the game, they have to matter, but, you know, the way they did it just, I mean, they had a good idea, but it just didn't, I think they didn't implement it right. They probably should go back to having incremental increases, but actually make those increases matter because, you know, there shouldn't be a night and day difference between 90 zone and 91 zone. I think we all agree with that. Um, you shouldn't need to be that one point higher to say, okay, now I can jump every route. It, it should be an incremental increase for some of these ratings, but you should be able to see a difference, whereas... You know, I can see like a catch rating having a definitive threshold. Okay, if you have this catch rating and you're wide open, you won't drop the ball. But they actually have to make it work because even with that being in the game, we still saw drop picks. We still saw drop passes and overthrows. So, good idea. Uh, not the worst thing that failed this year, but they definitely need to make it better or, you know, just go back to the, the way it used to be. So, that's it. Those are the five things I got. Do you have anything that you want to add to this? Drop it in the comments below. Do you think I left out a big one? Uh, do you not agree with some of the things I said? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.